So when is this recital exactly? May the 15th. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. A mere blot on the cultural calendar. Uh, what's this? My brother cannot feign modesty for the life of him. And why should he? Thomas is making his piano debut. Mm -hmm. Schubert, Verdi, Chopin. All of the major publications will be there. The music connoisseurs of the capital. And us, I mm -hmm. suppose. Oh, do I have to go? I find Schubert so dull. <laughs> He's joking. You're joking. It's not just Schubert. There'll be a selection. Well, I suppose congratulations are in order. Thank you. <laughs> ah! What's that? The new groundskeeper. Mother hired him. Completely incompetent. Seems a rather sombre fellow. Any approval of Mother's decisions on your part, Thomas, would be a rare thing indeed. Darling? What have you done? I don't like to be the subject... I don't like to be the subject of conversation. Well, people are curious. Understandably. Show me. Dear mother, I suppose you could say I've landed on my feet, although I'm not sure I'll ever feel settled here. Even as the summer air comes in, Falgarth, with its high stone walls, still gives off something of a chill. What keeps me occupied? The family, for all their airs and graces, have been quite accommodating, despite my lack of skill in the field. But with no word from you, I begin to worry. The constant knowledge of your ailments keeps me more than a bit on edge. I miss you, ma'am. As usual, I enclose my wages of eight shillings, which I hope can tide you over for the next while. Your son, John. Well, no doubt you've reached Lord Harris's standard. Yes. I know. He would never have asked you to play if you hadn't. Let's not pretend the hallowed name of Croydon did not play a part in that. Ever the cynic. Indeed I must be. I'm surrounded by insufferable well wishes. Would you stop? And it's not just you. I've had servants vying for my attention for weeks. They know Mother is planning a cull of the staff. They're simply trying to save their own necks. Is that so? Why then did you hand-pick a new employee during our stop in Queenstown? Mr. Casey. I didn't forget his face. Well, there's always room for a strong pair of hands. 
Don't go getting any ideas. I don't know what you mean. Lunch and master corn? Uh, yes, yes, come on. You missed quite a fine homily this morning. Canon Greer was speaking on the virtue of abstinence. Now, it's not that the Lord looks dimly upon those of us born into excess. Rather, what we choose to do with that privilege. For the greater good, of course. I had no idea you were so saintly, Mother. You know, I cannot understand why you refuse the church. How you ever hope to become a man of substance is beyond me. It puts me in quite an unpleasant position. But why must I ever attend when I have you to relate all for me? Don't test me, Thomas. I'm not in the mood. One of your headaches? Yes, one of my headaches. Take no notice, Mother. Thomas is merely anxious about his recital. As he should be. Rhubarb tart, Lady Gordon? Yes, thank you. Moira, in the interest of abstinence, I've decided to forfeit dessert. Why do I always have to be the one mountain? House rules. <laughs> don't pretend you don't like it. I'm sure it makes a nice change from trying to please fair maidens of coat. At least I've had a girl. Ooh, bully for you. <laughs> no, darling, you're much better off away from all that. Mm. Just don't go spilling every detail in those letters of yours. To my mother? Not a chance. <laughs> Although, what would your mother say? She knew what went on in here. Heaven forbid. Thomas, this is unacceptable behaviour. <laughs> and would a peasant, no less, never have such acts of depravity occurred within the walls of Falgirth. No. She's well aware of my deviance. Still probably throw me out, though. No question. Truth be told, I couldn't bear it. I don't know what I'd do without you. What do you suppose hell feels like? <sighs> Surely not as stifling as these bed sheets. <laughs> Something the matter. You do realise you're representing Lord Harris next Friday, as well as yourself. You also represent your late father, God rest his soul. Do you think his name worthy of such indifference? The recital is in a matter of days, Thomas. You have a chance to prove your worth at last, and I'll not sit idly by and watch you squander it. You don't believe me capable of greatness. I believe you are an insolent boy who has thus far devoted his life to disobedience and folly. 
It would no doubt fail just to spite me. Now play. Play, I say! Mr. Casey! He left for Greenstead this morning. You should have stopped him. Forgive me, Master. He'll be back tomorrow. He seemed quite determined. That's what defeats the purpose of our arrangement. Don't you agree? been to see your mother, haven't you? Tell me, how is she? Much the same, I'm afraid. I was in two minds as to whether or not to leave her. I missed you. Just disappeared without a word. I was relieved of my duties. What, what, what's the matter? Nothing, Thomas. Come now, she'll pull through. Don't worry. I crave you constantly. Don't you know that? Yes! But I'm not your paid whore, huh? Tending your gardens by day. And then... Servicing you by night. Sean, please. Yeah. Please, don't be this way. I've arranged for you to attend the concert next Friday. Promise me you'll be there.
explain yourself. I beg your pardon, miss? Mr. Casey's mother is ridden with pneumonia. Last week he paid her a visit and found she had not yet received one penny of the wages he'd sent. I was only following orders from Master Croydon. My brother allowed you to pocket what you found, did he not? Forgive me. I had no notion the woman's condition was so grave. What's that in your hand? Give it to me. Give it to me! My dear Moira, I suggest you pack your bags at once. My lord, welcome to Cargo. Pleasure to see you, my dear. Oh, and how is that brother of yours? I do hope he's fully prepared for tonight's performance. Indeed. <laughs> 